Now, the National Prosecuting Authority has so far received 43.5 million rand through donations and sponsorships. The funds are coming in as the NPA is still reworking its policies to be consistent with National Treasury guidelines. We're now joined by Glennis Breitenbach, a DM Member of Parliament, and Veronica Mente, EFF Member of Parliament. A very good afternoon to both our guests and thank you very much uh, for joining us. Perhaps let's just take a look uh, at um, the document of the NPA in terms of of um, its, uh, I'll tell you now, I do beg your pardon. And so this is the annual report. And on page seven of the annual report, it speaks of the strategic outcomes of the NPA for 2020 to 2025. And it speaks of increased feelings of safety and security for all South Africans, improved investor confidence in South Africa through high impact prosecutions and improved access to NPA services for all. And to achieve that, capacitating the NPA and ensuring that all regions and business units have the requisite specialist capacity is just but one uh, of the perceived outcomes that will determine the success. Veronica, let's start with you because there's been concerns that have been raised about the private funding of the NPA, the party's uh, position. Uh, thank you very much for having us. Um, we do not agree with um, private uh, donations being given to the NPA. First and foremost, we ought to answer a question of what is the mandate of the NPA? And the mandate of the NPA is to ensure that justice and prosecution of crime is done without fear, without favor and prejudice. And then working with its partners within the law enforcement spectrum, they must solve these problems and prevent crime and provide justice to the victims. Now, how will you be providing justice to the victims if Veronica has given you a million rand in order for you to prosecute? And the same Veronica has been abusing women. Now you have to be prosecuting Veronica for abusing other citizens. It's not going to work. It's not going to be uh, independent already by providing you with the means of your office to function i'm prejudicing you and i'm prejudicing the victims and i'm making sure that everything you do you are doing it at the back of your mind you must understand who is feeding you like we say the hand that feeds you you can't bite it Glennis, the independence of the office, especially in ensuring justice, is in question. Is this something that is a worry to you? Well, let me start off by agreeing that the National Prosecuting Authority must be fiercely independent and it must prosecute without fear, favor or prejudice, always. But having said that, the National Prosecuting Authority and other um, players in the criminal justice system have always uh, being funded from extraneous sources. The budget has never been sufficient to, uh, to fully fund uh, any of the criminal justice uh, players. So the police get um, uh, funding the, in the, by way of donations. Um, the NPA has always received uh, funding uh, by way of donations. And as long as it's carefully managed and as long as it's uh, scrupulously done, and as long as everybody understands that there's no quid pro quo, no favours asked and no favours granted, then there's, in, in our view, absolutely nothing wrong with accepting donations, depending on where they come from, of course. So, you know, if, if a known, uh, if a known uh, for want of a better word, gangster comes along with the with offer of a donation, obviously you're not going to entertain it. How... Um, but having said that, you know, the, the Specialized Commercial Crime Unit, the very successful business unit within the NPA, which has uh, for decades now prosecuted complex commercial crime and very successfully, uh, was founded on uh, a public-private partnership. Hmm. Uh, the funding for, for the Specialized Commercial Crime Unit came uh, in a small portion from the Department of Justice and a, a, and a very big portion from... Uh, business Against Crime funded by USAID. So uh, it's, it's not anything that's unusual. It needs to be scrupulously managed. Uh, it needs to be uh, you know, completely transparently managed. And there can be no question 
of any quid pro quo, and everybody needs to understand that. Uh, donations from uh, individuals is something completely different, and um, one would perhaps not be quite so keen to, to, uh, to accept those. Veronica Glenna speaks of uh, transparency. How transparent has the process been in terms of knowing who donates and how much they donate and what their interest is? The PFMA, in terms of Section 71, which governs how uh, funds are flowing in departments uh, within uh, South Africa, uh, states that Treasury must make regulations that are governing every fund in, in the aspect of donations. Now, what are the Treasury regulations that are guiding donations? The Treasury regulations that are guiding donations on Clause 21 are clear that all those donations must be declared. And any institution that receives a donation, it should declare it through the annual financial statements, which eventually find their way into their annual report, which we were reading from earlier on. Now, let's come to the identity of the people that are donating. There is even a choice that a person's identity may not be disclosed provided that it goes to the public protector and the auditor general. And on those aspects, how do you then assess that this is a well-known gangster? How do you then assess that this is a person who in the near future has an interest that has to be defended by the NPA? You cannot do that because law lives with us and we cannot have fluidity when it comes to the donations, in particular for the NPA, because the NPA should always carry its independence. The NPA should always not be hindered by bearing in mind that which hand has ever fed me, who is supplying the resources for us to successfully run the offices of the operations in terms of the NPA. Therefore, the role of funding the NPA is the state. What we have to do as South Africans and as parliamentarians is appropriation of enough and sufficient funding for the NPA to run its office. It's not like a school in South Africa where anyone can donate and build a school. That is an institution that must carry out justice in the benefit of the people of South Africa. So how do we benefit in, as people of South Africa when a leader of ShopRite is donating 10 million rand, and the very same leader of ShopRite is abusing ShopRite workers. How are we going to get successful prosecution for those people? It cannot be. Justice is going to be hindered. Justice is going to be compromised. Dennis, uh, Veronica speaks of successful prosecutions. Whether you do not have water when you open the tap, we told about state capture. Electricity, we told about state capture. You want to scratch your head, we told about state capture. But the effectiveness of the office, especially in light of the 29 million rand new lane trial, which is a state capture case, how effective is this office? Are we pouring money or, my, or water into a porous bucket? Well, you know, we talk about state capture as if it happened sort of over a couple of days, but state capture hollowed out all of our criminal justice institutions uh, insidiously and uh, with a, a very targeted effect for, for over a decade. Uh, so the NPA has been very seriously affected by state capture. The police has been very seriously affected by state capture. Any institution with any investigative or prosecutorial capacity was targeted and hollowed out by state capture uh, in order to render them ineffective because that meant that you could operate with impunity. And so, so that remains a serious problem today. Uh, I think that we have made strides in, in turning that around, but uh, we're not even halfway there. Uh, and so the police are seriously under-resourced. The National Prosecuting Authority is seriously under-resourced, both in terms of money, financial resources, but also in terms of uh, human resources, in terms of experience, in terms of capacity, in terms of institutional knowledge. That those things are gone. Those people have left. They're not coming back. And so when you look at uh, something like the New Lana case in, in the Free State, uh, you know, that is a, a very harsh, stark 
example of how hollowed out the abilities of the police and the NPA have become. That case was entirely winnable. Uh, you know, the, the fact that they managed to lose it is it fills one with in, incredulity. It's it's um it's astonishing. So, you know, uh, you know, the honourable mentor is quite correct when she says that the NPA must be fiercely independent. I couldn't agree with her more. Um, I, I do disagree with her when, when it comes to biting the hand that feeds you. The National Prosecuting Authority can have no friends, can do no favours. And it doesn't matter whether you're a supporter, a donor, uh, or whatever you are. The, it, it cannot absolve you from uh, accountability. So if, if somebody has donated uh, in terms of some donation program to the NPA and somewhere down the line finds themselves on the wrong end of an investigation or a prosecution, well, that's just too bad. It cannot influence the NPA, and they certainly cannot ask for any favours because they'll be granted none. Um, It's very clear that that donations are made with no favours asked and certainly none granted, and that's always been the case. And justice is blind. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, the, the justice will be meted out to you in exactly the same fashion, whether you've at some point donated or, or, or not. It's irrelevant. Veronica, justice is blind. There is no such. Once you, you have uh, empowered the NPA through resources that you are an affording person, justice then becomes a justice with eyes. The capturing of justice is in action through donations. If I may just cite now, right now, a case of 3,000 workers in Middleburg that were, that are, were uh, employed by the previous Gupta mine, which is now in the new hands and the new ownership. And through the processes of NPA and government that can intervene and interfere in the processes of, of NPA and in the processes of justice, the miners can be out of work by the end of June because the NPA is delaying the case of how is this matter being resolved, how is the state getting involved in this because this was judged and done by the independent board which was dealing with the sale of the mine. And the sale of the mine was done thoroughly, efficiently, well, and the mine was sold successfully. But now we have elements of business people who have money that can influence how the NPA, how the investigation of the matters, and how we can take cases to court, even if they are frivolous. So in that aspect, justice have got eyes. I can frustrate you using the justice just because I'm a well-known person, okay. just because I'm a person with money and resources, and I can utilize those resources to empower the NPA to frustrate you. And in the process, workers are going to suffer. Thank you very much to both.